community moves towards despotism, respect is restricted to fewer people. That's veteran Denver police officer Charles Jones IV smashing an unarmed suspect in the face six times. Officers accused of using excessive force on a suspect and then trying to erase the evidence. Of I'm, I'm observing what they're doing and they're arresting me. I don't understand what's going on. A community rates low on an information scale when the press, radio, and other channels of communication are controlled by only a few people. Does it raise ethical questions about the use of government money to produce stories about the government that wind up being aired with no disclosure that they were produced by the government? How can you ask such a question? What difference at this point does it make? When a competent observer looks for signs of despotism in a community, he looks beyond fine words and noble phrases. There are actions I have the legal authority to take as president that will help make our immigration system more fair and more just. Tonight, I'm announcing those actions. What I say goes, see? I'm the law around here. <laughs> he came, he saw, he died. <laughs> yes, in modern warfare, our military leaders are finding that words and ideas are highly effective weapons. We just have to be repetitive about this. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. We are trained to deceive if we have to. You really didn't, don't have to trust me. You shouldn't trust me. In fact, by my actually participating in that, I will taint the news. In communities of this kind, despotism stands a good chance. The nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Okay, Miss Hughes, well, we're, we're going to do everything we can to help you. <laughs> Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's The Alex Jones Show, because there is a war on for your mind. President, just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. We are back on InfoWars Nightly News and Louder with Crowder is reporting University reverses gender-neutral bathroom experiment. Gender-neutral bathrooms, they're all the politically correct rage. Or not, as this case shows, local school boards across the US continue to reject the idea of bathroom swapping. And now a university which had previously embraced the concept has closed its gender-neutral bathroom doors for good. In a shocking discovery, the University of Toronto recently found that allowing gender-neutral bathrooms increased the rate of voyeurism, or to use the more common English, peeping, also known as being a sicko and a pervert. Because what they found, not very surprising, is that allowing young men with raging hormones to use the same bathroom as young women is not a good idea. So basically they had this experiment, you know, in the name of sensitivity and progressivism towards transgender people to allow men to use female bathrooms and vice versa. All that ended up happening was literally the men would go in, stand on the stalls with their cell phone cameras and start taking videos of naked women as they showered. Again, all in, all in the name of cultural sensitivity. So it completely backfired but not a word of complaint from feminists. Of course, we have them pushing this mantra over and over again, whining about a college campus rape culture that doesn't exist. They claim that one in five college girls are victims of rape. It turns out that they're less likely to be raped than the general female population outside of college. But now with this policy, again, to appease cultural sensitivities to be politically correct, they're basically allowing men to film naked women. Because again, it's all about the oppression Olympics. You know, transgender sensitivities rank higher than actually protecting women from perverts. So that's the way it's going to stay. And they've indicated that even though this has been a complete failure and that it's resulted in voyeurism, that it's resulted in men claiming that they feel like females for that particular day, going in and literally trying to get nudes on their cell phones, that they may indeed continue with this policy because it's more important to be politically correct than to actually protect women from perverts. Again, completely ludicrous, but all in the name of PC. Rushdie warns of new dangers to free speech in the West. This is out of Yahoo News. Violence against writers and a misplaced sense of political correctness pose new dangers to freedom of speech in the West, writer Salman Rushdie said on Tuesday. Rushdie, the subject of an Iranian death threat in 1989 for his book, The Satanic Verses, which was deemed blasphemous by many Muslims, said he had not expected freedom of expression to come under attack again to this extent in the Western world. And this is the key quote. Listen to what he said about universities. Quote, the idea that students should not be intellectually challenged at universities is exactly why we should fight. So again, he's calling out universities for imposing, you know, safe spaces, trigger warnings in literature, literally trying to protect students who should go to universities to have free 
vigorous and open debate, have their ideas challenged, propose their own ideas and expect them to be challenged. They're now being protected, again, all in the name of political correctness. Trigger warning, safe spaces where they can literally hide away and know and be guaranteed that their, their ideas won't be challenged. Manchester University recently had an event called Does Feminism Have a Problem with Free Speech? Before the event began, they banned both an anti-feminist and a feminist from taking part in that debate, a debate about questioning whether feminism has a problem with censorship. So again, complete hypocrisy, and it goes down, it drills to the heart of the matter, which is what I've made a video about. Classical liberals are horrified by the damage that progressivism has done to the left, which is why we, now we see a, a backlash, which is cultural libertarianism, and that is why it's resonating so powerfully with many classical liberals, because they defend classical liberal principles of free speech. You don't have to agree with somebody's political stance, but you have to tolerate their right to make that argument and your right to strike back with your own ideas. And in fact, Edward Snowden came out last night with a tweet, which has offended all the social justice warriors, basically, again, challenging these universities that have banned free speech, again, in Manchester, an event called Does Feminism Have a Problem with Censorship? The first thing they did, the very first thing they did was ban two people, one of which was a feminist called Julie Bindle. Now, this is a woman that writes for The Guardian. She's been on national television a number of times. She, in an interview recently, said that all men should be put in concentration camps and that anyone else could be given visitation rights to see them in those concentration camps. Again, a completely ludicrous idea, but I agree that she should have the right to say such things. They banned her because she doesn't agree with this transgender rights push. And then on the other side, they had a, an anti-feminist, Milo Yiannopoulos, who has been controversial, you know, as, a, as this gay conservative Christian, again, being a critic of feminism. So cultural libertarianism is rising, and this is why, because feminism has a big problem with censorship. Here's my video on that subject. The next great battle in defending the principles of freedom and true individuality won't be fought against authoritarianism emanating from the state. It will be fought against authoritarians imposing their dogma through culture. This is a culture war. Shit just got real. And the more progressivism demands absolute obedience to its doctrine, the more regressive it reveals itself to be. Progressivism is the new Puritanism. And that's why many traditional left-wingers are abandoning it in droves. Throughout history, society has persecuted, maligned, and silenced truth-tellers. Those who dared challenge the consensus faced oppression from the state. But modern-day persecution takes different forms. Prime amongst them is peer pressure and ostracism. Given their natural proclivity for intolerance, Progressives are more likely to socially shun anyone who doesn't parrot their rhetoric. Amongst younger generations, this has functioned as an efficient means of ensuring that libertarian and conservative perspectives on the major social issues of our time remain on the fringes. Somehow we've been browbeaten into thinking that challenging the progressive consensus on any issue will leave us estranged, alienated, and miserable. Even though the facts show that liberals are unhappier, poorer, and despite their obsession with virtue signalling, far stingier than conservatives when it comes to donating to charity. I'm triggered. But the progressive establishment has a problem, because contrarianism is becoming cool once again. Politically, we've shifted to the left to such a degree that the hunger for non-conformist thought and opinion is raging. I want the truth! And whether you agree with him or not, that's why Trump has become so popular. And it only makes common sense. That's why third wave feminism is cratering, while a movement that has come to be known as cultural libertarianism is soaring. Fewer and fewer people are resonating with the progressive mantra. People are sick to the back teeth of being told what to think. They're tired of progressives telling them what to feel about absolutely everything. What opinions they need to adopt 
to earn social brownie points from their trendy liberal friends.